So uh, this is the proposed preliminary plat. We have the 2.2 acre neighborhood business parcel here. You have a 25 foot and a 35 foot wide uh, pathway that was previously dedicated as part of the Windfall Hills development. And you also have a uh, another park portion uh, running along Paradise Creek there uh, to the northwest corner of the property. There'll be two stormwater detention ponds. Uh, you have one proposed to be here in the northerly uh, portion. You also have the existing one that I had mentioned before, which is part of the Rolling Hills uh, additions to the south. You also have uh, existing storm sewer mains uh, run along an easement here, and you also have uh, sanitary sewer, which has already been extended all the way along the Third Street alignment, and that was part of an agreement between the Rolling Hills developer and the previous Windfall Hills uh, developer. So that's already in. We have water to the property, uh, which extends here. It'll be extended through mains uh, along that Third Street alignment. And you also have uh, 22 twin home platted lots, and so um, each one of the, or, you know, every two lots on your screen here would contain really one structure. Say that again. So what a twin home is, it, you know, on appearance it may look like a duplex, but you have a, a common lot line, uh, the, the common wall in the middle that separates the two units. There's a lot line that runs down, which allows division of ownership. And so uh, you're able to get a single family uh, mortgage on each side. And so the structure would actually go across, you know, this would be the common wall, and you would have uh, the footprint which would extend in a, yeah. in a pretty much a square across two of those parcels. <coughs> Looking at the, the thoroughfare plan, uh, which is within our comprehensive plan, uh, designates streets uh, within the city and future connections. And so, as you can see, the lightly see there, the dashed green line uh, represents the third street future alignment that ends up connecting uh, to the Rolling Hills addition, going through Rolling Hills 8th, and then heading north to end up eventually connecting with D Street. So uh, it is on our comprehensive plan, thoroughfare plan, as uh, a future collector street. Looking at the water infrastructure to the property, uh, it's currently extended to the property and runs along that third street alignment. Uh, we have a anticipation that under commonly observed household water use, uh, just the twin home <coughs> lots could reasonably be anticipated to use about 2 million gallons of water per year. Looking at sewer infrastructure, like I mentioned, uh, that 8-inch main currently exists in the 3rd Street alignment, and that was part of that agreement between the, the two developers. Uh, storm sewer will be conveyed through uh, mains and 3rd Street to the detention ponds, and it will eventually end up in uh, Paradise Creek. Going through parkland dedication, uh, once you subtract the park area, stormwater detention, pond areas, and streets, you end up with 4.79 acres of net developable land. Uh, under our zoning code, R3 zones require 7% dedication. Neighborhood business requires 9%. So you have about a 16,500 square foot dedication requirement. And the applicant has proposed to dedicate parkland in two locations. And, and you know, we brought them up before, the 25-foot wide uh, strip and the 35-foot wide strip, which were previously dedicated. Uh, the 25-foot wide linear pathway uh, is about 3,333 square feet in size. You have the 35-foot pathway, which is 22,491 square feet in size. It also includes that area uh, that's new. It's proposed to run along uh, Paradise Creek and connect with this 35-foot wide linear path property. So the cumul cumulative of that uh, equates to 25,824 square feet. Uh, so that would be about 9,000 square feet in excess of the requirement, and the applicants wish to bank the parkland uh, for future plats to the east. And our, uh, there should be a memo in your packet from our Parks and Rec director uh, indicating that their Parks and Recreation is fine with that proposal. So I just wanted to highlight those areas in green. Uh, and those are your parkland uh, dedication proposal. <coughs> so staff's recommendation before you tonight uh, is appro recommend approval of the rezone and comprehensive plan land use amendment with no conditions 
and recommend approval of preliminary plat with the following conditions, and they're both from Public Works, that the applicant shall widen 3rd Street from 70 feet to 80 feet near its intersection with Mountain View Road in order to accommodate the left turn lane, uh, which is turning left out on the Mountain View. Uh, the applicant shall enter into a new memorandum of understanding and development agreement which allows the deferral of the construction of Jansen Street, including all underground utilities to future plat additions to the east. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission did conduct a public hearing that happened on July 22nd, 2015, and they recommended denial of the comp plan, land use amendment, and rezone, and they recommended denial of the preliminary plat at that time. So uh, the actions before the council tonight, there's really going to be four of them. Uh, the first one is to conduct a public hearing upon the, the land use zoning designations and upon consideration of any testimony presented, approve the, the comp plan resolution and zoning ordinance under suspension of the rules requiring three complete separate readings that they read, be read by title and published by summary uh, or consider the resolution ordinance on first reading and they're read by title, reject the resolution and ordinance or take such action as deemed appropriate. The second is going to be uh, the reason statement of relevant criteria and so in accordance with the decision tonight uh, we're going to adopt planning and zoning's reason statement of relevant criteria or direct staff to uh, prepare one uh, for the council's consideration at a future meeting and then the third action is the, the hearing on the subdivision plat uh, the preliminary subdivision plat and considering any testimony presented uh, approve the plat for harvest hills addition with the two conditions recommended by staff reject the preliminary plat for Harvest Hills addition or take other action as deemed appropriate. And then that would also have to follow up with the relevant criteria and standards, which uh, could either take the planning and zoning's recommendation or direct staff at a future meeting date to, to bring uh, an RCS back. And with that, I, I'd certainly be able to try to answer any questions. Mike, that I got have. a couple of things before I turn it over to council questions for you. And one you had mentioned a retention pond or rolling hills. There is one right there now, correct? Correct. That's part of it. And then this this uh, development would have a second. Would have a second. Kind of the northeast, the northwest corner of their lot. Is that what? Yeah, contiguous with the uh, park property. Okay, contiguous so, with the park property. Yeah. That was, and then you had said earlier, we, there's, because uh, I thought you said the whole total uh, portion is 7.45 acres, 2.2 uh, neighborhood business. You were talking about the 22 homes, and I heard you say 7.25, and that should be 5.25 acres. Is that correct? Did I hear? I just want yeah, to get that clarified. Is it 525 the 22? Should should be for just oh, right, the R3 for the twin home. Right, R3. Yep. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> but that is 5.25 acres. What we're 5.25, and then you have the 2.2 for neighborhood. So cumulative would be 7.45 acres, which. Uh, is the entirety of the property. Okay, Dan, you had a uh, question? Yeah, procedurally, Mike, are we looking at um, one public hearing for both? I'll set that. Yes, we are. Yes. We're going to have one public hearing, as I said earlier, for three different things. And those things will be, of course, the comp plan, comp plan amendment that's asked for, the rezone, and the preliminary uh, plot. So we will do one hearing that will cover all three of those, Dan. So, all right, some more, Mike. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, just for my re-education, some clarification. But uh, could you explore a little bit about the uses that are for the neighborhood business and what would happen there, especially in contrast to motor business type uses? Because some of the comments from the public meeting. Uh, last time include comments about strip malls and convenience stores, and I think it would be edifying to hear what a neighborhood business zone actually encompasses. Well, it's going to be our less, our least intense commercial zone. Uh, motor business is generally located along highway corridors, uh, and it will allow a wide variety of commercial uses. It's probably the the most expansive commercial zone that we have. Um, neighborhood business is going to be limited, so it would allow residential uses, so it would allow a wide variety. Um, we allow personal services, restaurants, professional offices, daycare facilities, churches, and community neighborhood centers are typically the allowed uses. Some of them are conditional uses, uh, which would require you to go to the Board of Adjustment and uh, go through a public hearing. 
but uh, typically for those types much of uses. less automotive intensive and less likely to go late into the evenings. Yeah, a lot of these uses are intended, um, you know, during normal business hours, and then you know, generally tended to wrap up around eight to ten o'clock at no at bars. Night. No bars. So it would just allow restaurants. And so it's really intended to serve the adjacent neighborhood. And so northeastern uh, portion of town, um, really no commercial services to speak of. You have to go down Mountain View to the you know, east side marketplace. Uh, it would really be intended for these pocket commercial services that you could walk to or bike to. Um, and it would just be really intended for that neighborhood. Uh, excuse me, Mike, I have a question we'll about parking, here. and this has to do because of the planning and zoning meeting when we were talking, and I didn't, so with twin homes, um, will they have two, four parking spaces per household on their lot? And because I thought you said up there too, said there's no parking on either side of 3rd Street. Yeah, on our uh, collector standard and our street standard, there's there's no – unless the, the applicant wishes to uh, – we have an alternate drawing which has the bulb out type configuration which would allow some on-street parking. It just the right-of-way needs to be extended from about 70 to 80 feet. Um, but, yeah, you would have – for each side, you'd have two off-street parking spaces required. Uh, one of those spaces would have to be located, you know, in a garage or area which could be covered. So if you're looking at two of the lots, which would have really one twin home on it, four spaces would be required. Walter? Um, following up on Catherine's question, I was – I knew what we were doing, and then you confused me. Staff has a recommendation to go to an 80-foot right-of-way as part of the package, correct? Just at the, Mountain View. Yeah, that's just, just, just at Mountain, Mountain View. Just at Mountain View. So, so that's our left your turn comment about an, standard. About, a, about bulb outs and an alternative street is to take it to 80 for the length of this. For the length, if, if the applicant so chooses. And if it, were t if it were taken to 80, that would allow parking on one or both sides. I guess that's a question for you, Les. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I've, I've seen that particular drawing. Um, I believe I have, I have it right here, Les. Okay, that would help. Yeah, it it does allow parking on both sides with that additional right of way. the The seventy foot is the standard today in our our most recently adopted street standards for collector streets. Uh, within that is the uh, two travel lanes, the two bike lanes. Uh, the, the five foot minimum with sidewalks, which are bigger than we used to have, uh, and then the planter strips. And there's a fair bit of room in those planter strips to allow, uh, you know, for some variation in road widths or, you know, bus pullouts, things of that nature. As you approach intersections with the additional left turn lane, then there's not quite enough room to still maintain uh, sufficiently sized uh, bus, or excuse me, um, planter strips without additional right of way. So that's why the 80 foot at the intersection uh, at Mountain View. And then if we were going to add uh, parking in some fashion, uh, whether it's one side or the other, uh, typically there would need to be some additional right-of-way to accommodate that and still have at least some amount of green strip between that parking and the sidewalk. Okay. 